Warning. Although my content is usually family-friendly, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB rating system, and as such, will contain blood, language, suggestive themes, and violence. Viewer discretion is advised. Oh man, we're going to court today, everybody. Hope you remember everything that happened. I kind of don't, so... That's okay. You don't need it. <laughs> it's just... Thanks. It just helps. <laughs> Anyhow, we're going to... The day true, the day true trial former. Who will be true and who will be false? <laughs> Probably everyone will be false. February twenty third, nine thirty four a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number Two. How did the investigation go yesterday, Mister Wright? Frankly, there are still a lot of gray areas. Or rather, the whole thing is one big gray area. Don't worry about me, no matter what the outcome. I'm ready to accept my fate. I believe in you, sis. Mr. Wright, let me offer you a word of advice. Yes? A defense attorney should never believe their client. The defendant is called to trial because they are suspected of wrongdoing. Never forget that. Miss Sky, you... You remind me a lot of Mia. But there is one decisive difference between you and her. And that is? You're not a defense attorney. Yeah, they even have the same, like, expressions like, Oh! With yep. the hand. I believe it's almost time for the trial. Good luck, Mr. Wright. I kind of like her outfit. It is pretty spiffy. My first trial without a fay helping me. Mm, good luck. No one's, <laughs> go no one's going to bail me out this time. Until we discover... Oh, gosh. I'll be alone in there. Not necessarily. So I have to discover the truth all by myself. Mia could be like, the, f the, the brain. Let's do it, Mr. Wright. I'll be with you the whole way. Dang, girl. Where'd you get those pink tinted glasses? Yeah, I want them. <laughs> February 23rd, 10 a.m. Sharp, District Court, courtroom number 9. Oh, we're going to the big numbers now. I mean, I have pretty cool sunglasses, but I don't have that cool. My sunglasses have ducks on them. The court is now in session for the trial of Miss Mana Sky. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. <laughs> Edgeworth. He's like, look at me. Remember when I almost shot someone? <laughs> I haven't been in court since Edgeworth's trial. It's been a while now. Like a year. How has he been paying the bills? I don't know. I hope that personal feelings will not be a part of the proceedings today, Mr. Wright. I will choose the path I think is right, regardless of what those around me might say. The judgment to be made here is in our hands, not those of anyone else. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth, your opening statement, please. Chief Prosecutor Lana Sky has committed an unpardonable crime. Not only this, but she was rash enough to commit it in the prosecutor's office in the parking lot. Wow, he's much more forceful in person. I suddenly feel like confessing to everything. However, she will now pay for her rashness with her life. There was a witness to her crime. A professional witness. Well then, call your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution calls its first witness, Miss Angel Starr, to the stand. Oh. The cough-up queen? Hope you're ready to talk a lot. <laughs> okay. I had some water, I'm good. Okay. Hmm, haven't I seen you somewhere? You ordered the ca caviar lunch, right? Caviar. <laughs> caviar lunch, right? Oh, caviar! I've not eaten caviar before! The judge is really wolfing it down! Is this what you meant by bribed with food? <laughs> yes. Ah, and for you, I have a fiesta bowl. Uh, thanks. Will the witness state her name and profession? Ah, and you, sir. Did you order the fingerprint lunch box? It is too early for lunch. Your name and profession, please. Well, Your Honor, how does it taste? So this is why everyone raves about caviar. It's so tasty it hurts. I it always drops dead. I always thought <laughs> caviar would taste like pickled tapioca. What the heck does pickled tapioca <laughs> taste like? <laughs> I'm kind of with the judge though. I always picture caviar to taste absolutely disgusting. I always forget what caviar is. is Name, profession, now. Uh, caviar is like unhatched fish eggs. It's really weird. Oh, okay. Me, the name is Angel Star. Don't go forgetting it. I find myself running Lunchland these days. Is 
that what you wanted me to say, Mr. Edgeworth? Very well, witness. Please describe the incident to us. The prosecution will wait. I'm not finished <laughs> eating. <laughs> Hurry it up! Hmm. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth. As you know, we usually call on the police to provide us a description of the crime. Your Honor, as Mr. Edgeworth has said to the court, I am a professional. Uh, huh? What exactly does that mean? Until two years ago, Miss Angel Starr was a special investigator with the police. Why'd she quit, huh? She was a first-rate homicide detective. Why'd she quit, huh? <laughs> well, what? Miss Starr was a detective? Oh ha! I know who you are! Cough up? Cough up Queen Angel Star, Your Honor. Long time no see. V very well! Y you may continue with the description, Miss Star. Just who is this lady? <laughs> Did she, like... I'm trying to imagine what got her that nickname. Did she, like, accidentally, like, cough up something in the middle of, like, a dete like, detective thing and everyone's like, Oh, it's Cough Up Queen because she, like, threw up or something. Like, I'm I trying think to it's think because she made the defend or all, like, the suspects cough everything up. Oh, <laughs> like, maybe. Like, confess. May that makes more sense. If I might have the court's attention over here. Oh, boy. The parking lot at the prosecutor's office is divided into two blocks. A block is for the prosecutor's office personnel. And B block is for the visitors and clients. A chain divider separates the two blocks. I suppose that's to keep visitors from taking up prosecutors' spaces, yes. The crime took place by a car in the back of A block in the car's trunk. The killer stabbed the victim with a knife and went to drive the body out. Unfortunately for her, there was a witness, and an arrest was made on the spot. And who was this valiant witness? Why, it was me, Your Honor. Four plans added to the court record. This is what I'm guessing. She was hanging out in the parking lot, like, smooching that guy, <laughs> Bambina guy, and then she was like, oh, this just happened. Because <laughs> they're dating. Well, we're gonna hear from it. Witness, did you see the very moment of the crime? Of course, Your Honor. Immediately after that, I apprehended the chief prosecutor. Hmm. It seems rather cut and dry, doesn't it? Well, Mr. Wright? Uh, I can't agree on principle, Your Honor. <laughs> it seems that some poor losers are unwilling to accept the truth, Your Honor. Shall I proceed to crush what little hope they have remaining? If you can, then give them your worst, Miss Starr. Wow. Wait, are they talking about me? <laughs> Poor Phoenix. What was in that caviar? Witness testimony. Witnesses account. Somehow, I always knew a day like this would come. I was on my way to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend. Aha! When I sensed something, perhaps it was my finely honed detective instincts working. Wow. I mean, <laughs> that, that seems like proof enough. <laughs> then, through the wire fence, I saw a chief prosecutor standing next to a garish car. <laughs> Which side of the fence does, um, her boyfriend work? Um, the prosecutor's side. Then that's the problem right there. She saw through the fence, and they were on the prosecutor's side. Her car been... was parked oh, on the B-block. Oh, okay, that makes more sense. The chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. Then she thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. Hmm, bringing a lunchbox to your boyfriend? How touching! <laughs> hmm. As you can see, there is no room for doubt. The key point of your testimony seems to be nothing other than the point of the knife which you saw being stabbed into Detective Goodman. So, how does it feel to be so utterly crushed? I... I'm still thinking about that. <laughs> it's merely a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. Very well, Mr. Wright. You may cross-examine the witness. Cross-examination, witness's account. So she's, she's quite the witness, I'll say. Some of her testimonies are really tough. Okay. How did you know? I respect the prosecutor's basic ad ab abhorrence. abhorrence. Abhorrence of crime. Yet their methods are ugly and twisted. Twisted methods will always lead to tragedy. <laughs> the lunch lady's uninformed opinion is duly noted. Given that they are used to erasing inconvenient evidence at their whim... 
Killing off the detective that knew too much is merely an extension of that. Miss Starr, do you have something personal against prosecutors? I feel uh, I felt that I had found my dream job when I became an investigator. And if I hadn't been laid off by those prosecutors over there, I'd still be one. Maybe she killed someone. Laid off? She was fired. To me, prosecutors are nothing more than worms. That said, I am a pro, as you know. My testimony is unbiased and flawless. You're freaking right! <laughs> Very well, you may continue, Miss Star. I wonder how she got fired. Maybe we'll figure that out later. This boyfriend, he's the detective? Not that boyfriend, the security guard. Th that boyfriend? You have several? Yes, this boyfriend, that boyfriend, and the other boyfriend. Care to join? <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> the yet another boyfriend position still open for applicants. Uh, I'll stick with the lunch, thanks. Note to self, the judge has to think before replying. <laughs> the security guard room is in the lot in A, B, er, A block. <laughs> it's up on the second level so you can see everything from there. That would be the room with the security sign. <laughs> we weren't allowed to go in there, right? Nope. Incidentally, did you bring your lunchboxes by the car? Since I'm a visitor now, I park in, ble in B block. So, she was in B block when she witnessed the crime. Indeed. She looks really weird without her glasses, by the way. Emma? Yeah, Emma. You sensed something? So you're saying you had a premonition of the murder? It felt like... how would you say? Oh yes! It was like the feeling you get when you view a pumpkin chalk full of seeds. I have no idea what that means. Speaking of a detective's instincts, wasn't the victim, Mr. Bruce Goodman, also a detective? Yes, well, he was like a young cheese. A uh, young cheese? A pale white cheese, not yet tangy with experience on the streets. A greenhorn. Hmm. I, of course, am hard, yellowed, sharp as a tack. I bet you stink, too. B boom tsh wow <laughs> In any case, there, in the lot, I felt something stirring in the back of my mind. I have literally no idea what the heck this is, then. Yep. <laughs> By garish car, you mean... Mr. Edgeworth's car, yes. M mr Edgeworth's? Incidentally, the knife with which the victim was stabbed was also Mr. Edgeworth's. Wasn't it? Indeed, it was. Oh, I like her, um, outfit in the back. <laughs> Not the front, but... <laughs> hmm, what an odd case this is. And the person you saw, you are sure it was the defendant? I saw her with from no further than 30 feet away. I am of certain it was her. If she's telling the truth, we're doomed. Let's just do what we can! Even if we don't have any proof, we can always complain. <laughs> Witness, in your testimony, you clearly stated the following. Prosecutors are nothing more than worms. Ergo, you are a biased witness. You might want to keep those silly opinions to yourself in the future, Rookie. Huh? Rookie? Unless you're willing to risk the consequences of doubting me. I'll fry you like a fritter! Crispy on the outside, chewy on the inside! That... that was inspiring! I believe I've heard that tagline elsewhere. You could try, or you could cry plagiarism. I may be re relegated to the lower post of a lunch lady, but my instincts are honed. Ooh. A, a photograph? You took this? Maybe she discovered it. The moment I witnessed my crime, my reflexes took over and snap, I took the picture. In fact, one of my lunch boxes is rigged with a camera. I suppose that's more exciting than just hanging it around your neck. <laughs> Uh, this is my first time seeing this photograph. You think I'd show it to you, a prosecutor? Think again. My boyfriend works in the photography division of the criminal affairs. Well, this is most certainly the defendant. I think I might know what it is. I think, like, the chief prosecutor's like, Well, can't get out of this one. I didn't really kill them, but it totally looks like me, so I'm just gonna accept it. 
interesting. So, because, okay, look at her. She's she's just opening the trunk. It could be, like, some he was already... Dead? Dead. Well, then what, why wouldn't she just be like, I just saw the body? Because she was immediately arrested. Yeah, but that... Okay, at least if you say, I saw the body, you could get off the hook. If you say, I did it, True. that's pretty much guaranteed you're going to be found guilty. Sure. I'm just trying to think of what right. the explanation All is. Right. I think there's some really weird thing with her that, okay. like, is causing her to say this. Alright, that's fair. I don't think it's necessarily her. Uh-oh, that is unmistakably Lana Sky. So, what was the defendant doing at the time? The chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. Tell me more about this knife that the suspect was carrying. Well, I'd say the blade was about 10 centimeters long. Isn't that right, Mr. Edward? It is your knife, after all. Uh, <clears throat> yes, that's about right. Prosecutors are, by nature, well-versed in the location of a man's vital organs. I'm sure it was easier than boiling an egg for my egg salad surprise set. You, you can't testify as to her ability to kill an egg. I mean, a person. Hmm? Perhaps a chicken salad set would have been a better metaphor. So the defendant was holding a knife. What then? Then she thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. Tell the court why you didn't try to stop this crime. You did see her raise the knife to strike, no? Hmm. The defense has a point. Unfortunately, by the time I realized what was going on, it was already too late. Too late? Yes. The next moment, the chief prosecutor brought down the murder weapon. Ah, I see. It's only a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. We can make it. You said that before. Anything else? Scientifically speaking, Miss Starr's testimony is flawless. Sounds pretty fatal to me. What do we do now? Is this it? Is my sister guilty? Let's just keep our heads cool and press the witness a bit, shall we? For some reason, having her panicking next to me makes me calmer. D don't smile like that! Alright, so... Okay, let's look at our evidence. That's always a good start. Yeah. So we've got the attorney's badge, Goodman's ID, Okay. the prosecutor trophy, Oh boy. Edgeworth's knife, no prints on it. Okay. Uh, Edgeworth's parking stub. Right. The blue badger, probably not gonna mm -hmm. be helpful. Goodman's autopsy. Death due to loss of blood. Oh, we can get more details if we do this. Knife was a different length. This is caused by a 12 centimeter knife. I mean, she said it was roughly 10 centimeters. True. That's close enough. A single stab wound was found. Okay. Yep. Um, victim's, victim's note. note. The one that says 67S122. 67S122? Yep. 12-2 is the day? I mean, we don't really know. Okay. Uh, Lana's cell phone? She called Emma at 518. This is what I don't understand. If she was arrested immediately, how was she able to call her sister? Hmm, that's an interesting point. Like, if, if they were like, we're gonna arrest you, she can't be like, wait, can I take two seconds and call my sister? Or was it like she was in the middle of calling her and then they were like, arrest, that's why she dropped the phone? That's, I mean, we don't really know, it's probably the second one. And we've got that. There's, wait, go back. Okay, it's still A, yes, it's in the corner. Yeah, so that's like right behind the partition where the phone is on the other side. Okay. Um... Through the wire fence. How could she see her through the wire fence? It's a, it's like a chain link fence. Yeah, you can but, see through it. Sure, but the car. If you have the tr car trunk, you wouldn't. Is she tall enough that you could see over it? I don't know. I mean, she was looking from an angle, so she could probably, probably. see at least a little okay. into the trunk. All right. She's holding the knife in her right hand. She thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. Okay. Huh. Uh, next, or do you I'm know? actually I'm actually trying to remember this myself. What? Okay. I have like two ideas. Okay, what? It, let me. <laughs> Which I I should know this, but so, thrust the pointy tip of the knife. Well, 
if she if she stabbed the knife into his chest like deep enough to kill him, wouldn't there be blood on more than just the tip? Probably. Traces of the victim's blood. No prints. That's the other thing. That's weird. Well, she was wearing gloves. Died. Probably. It's okay. So died February twenty first between four p.m. five thirty p.m. Um, single stab in this one. I don't, I, I mean, I don't have any experience stabbing anyone, so I don't know how the blood works. Right. One thing we could also try is sometimes you have to press statements again after you do it the first time and you'll get new information. Oh. Sometimes. Was there anything that you're like, this is suspicious? Um, only the knife part I was talking about earlier. Okay. Alright, should we try the knife Let's then? try the knife then. Nope. Nope, that was not it. Your Honor, what do you think about the witness's statement? Uh, I'm not sure I follow. It clearly uh, contradicts the... Uh, I thought... You don't sound very convinced, Mr. Wright. Objection overruled. I don't think that won me any points with the judge. Whoops. Okay. Alright. Death due to the loss of blood, one knife wound. Died within an hour and a half of... Four. Four. So yeah, that's that's still correct. I want to look at the note. Loss of blood from a chest wound. Check. 12-2. 7-S. Yeah, I, I don't have anything for that. All right, can go. we still spin it around? We can, not all the evidence we can do that. The note is one of those we cannot spin around. Okay. Let's try pressing these statements again, and okay. I'm just gonna fast forward through them as much as I can. And if we get new information, then it, we, I won't be able to fast forward through it anymore. Uh. Do, nice. do, do. Yeah, that once you've seen the text once before, you can just mash through it. Second level. Yep. But she was from B coming from the How, B block. Okay, this is something. Can we see the prints of the layout? Oh yeah. That's what I need to see. Is there a connection from B parking lot to A? There's the fence between them. So you would have to hop the fence in order to get over. Well, that's a problem right there because she's trying to get to the security room. Right. So why would she be there in the first place? I also want to check this. Uh... It is through the fence. Yeah, because you can see the fence clearly. A, so I want to see um, from there then the prints. Just to see like where the car is about. Okay, so, that's so it's a car. up there. It's up there, yeah. Yeah, so that makes sense. Okay. Everyone's Dude. like, why Dude. do you not know this? <laughs> like, sitting forever. Oh, I can cut this out, though. That's true. Okay, there must be something really obvious that we're missing. Like, something that's like, oh, it's so simple we didn't even think to. Well, then I can right hand. Is she, like, left-handed or something? Um, probably not. Very few people are left-handed in this. <laughs> Alright, nothing new for that. I'm pretty sure this is the one that's there's something okay. wrong with. The pointy tip of the knife and the Mr. Goodman's chest. Let's look at his... I mean, we could be like, well, that d the photo doesn't show that. Yeah, let's try that. Oh, that was it. And you witnessed this? You saw Miss Sky stab the victim with the knife? As I've already said, yes. I swear it on my finest salmon swirl lunch. Ew. Hmm, I'm sure that is a fine lunch. I don't think so. Ugh. But, isn't that odd? Look at this photograph. This is the photograph you took of the very moment of the crime, is it not? Then why is Miss Sky not holding the knife? <clears throat> Mr. Edgeworth, your thoughts? Objection. Let's be a little more careful with our evidence, shall we? It is you that needs to be more careful, Mr. Wright. What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? 
This photograph was not taken the moment before the stabbing. This was taken the moment after the stabbing. Objection! <laughs> How can you tell that? Blood splatter. Huh? See the dark crimson stain on the chief prosecutor's coat? No. It's a black and white photograph! Ah, yes, it's hard to tell, but this could be blood. Well, Mr. Wright, I see no problem here. Freaking Edgeworth. No problem, except you. Mr. Wright, are you going to just sit there and take that kind of abuse? Ah, you got a better idea? Objection! No problem. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Now that you mention it, I see no problem here. Other than myself. Mr. Wright, you can't just let him walk all over you. That's just sad. Feeling sad, Mr. Wright? <laughs> Perhaps a special lover's lunchbox to cheer you up. <laughs> I've never seen that lunchbox before. That's, That's great. awesome. Well, that was a waste of time. Let's continue with the testimony. Perhaps I should have dug a little deeper. Alright, fine. Wait! That contradicts what the witness said in her testimony. Namely, that she took the picture the moment she witnessed the crime. Well, it seems I was slightly unclear. My apologies. Th that's it? If you run out of lunch, you order seconds. Problem solved. If you don't like it, try ordering the jumbo-sized lunch from the get-go. Good advice. I'm not sure I understood it, but good advice. I didn't have time to stop her. Prosecutor Sky was cold, calculating like a robot. She killed without pain or remorse. It was a premeditated murder. A premeditated murder. murder. P premeditated? How do you know? Look at the chief prosecutor's hands in that photograph. Whoa! Are those gloves? Surgical gloves made of thin rubber, most likely. Why would she have those on? Um... If it was not premeditated, she would not be wearing those gloves. It was cold out! It's February! Ew. Wah! Wah! <laughs> These gloves do seem to tell a tale of premeditation. Premeditated murder. A serious offense. Witness, add this to your testimony. The murder was planned. The rubber gloves prove it. What if she was just in the habit of wearing gloves? Like, driving gloves? Or like Elsa? Oh man, Elsa. I have not seen Frozen. The gloves were admitted as evidence when the defendant was arrested. They were rubber gloves of the kind used for autopsies. In other words, when the chief prosecutor came to the crime scene, she came to do murder. It's the only possible conclusion one can make. Everything was planned and it was a premeditated murder! Ah! Impressive. I'm sorry they took you off the force, Miss Star. This is bad. She's got them thinking this was all planned. If she can prove this claim, the trial's already over. I've got to think of a way to show that this wasn't premeditated. It's only a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. We can make <laughs> Yeah, it. we've said this already. <laughs> Alright, well, we know at least the statement that the problem's on. Alright, do you know... Do you think of, can you murder think of evidence planned. that it was not a planned murder? Mm. Do we have the gloves that we can examine? Nope. Dang it! Does any what is another use for wearing rubber gloves besides like surgery? Stuff? Um, you use them in the food industry for to make sure. Well, they're not like rubber gloves. They're yeah, but they're like gloves. latex gloves. Yeah. Um. I mean, it could just be like you're styling. You <laughs> sure? Um. Uh, what about the ID? How would that prove it? Well, I, they weren't friends. That doesn't mean anything. Okay, but she wasn't like okay. I'm. Um, she called. She was calling him out. Mm -hmm. There. Why would he be in the trunk? I think that's the main thing that I'm like, huh. Like I you think wouldn't... the prosecution right now is like, yeah, she stabbed the guy and then shoved him in the trunk. Oh. I think that's okay. what they're saying. Okay, 
Uh, what about the... Uh, but then she had to call her cell phone. Yeah. I don't know. Most people don't use a cell phone and then rubber gloves. Especially in this day and age where if you have a touch phone, which gloves don't, don't work! Which she did not. <laughs> I it's know. a flip phone. I know. Do you not know? Uh, let me see the parking stub. It's just proving Edgeworth oh. parked his car there at 512. <sighs> I don't know. Do you need a hint then? Let me see the autopsy. Do, 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 do. Nope, that doesn't tell anything either. the next page. Crime photo. Need to, like, get close. What happened to her other hand? She cut it, remember? She has the bandage on her hand. She's like, yeah, I cut myself when I was stabbing the guy. Well, no, but I meant, like, there's no hand there. It's like, here's her arm, here's her hand. She's not, she doesn't have it for the sleeve of the coat. Oh. I don't know them. Alright. Oh, it is the knife? Yep. Witness, do you know what this is? Are you trying to test me? I sell box lunches for a living, you know. That's a knife. The knife. The knife that was in Mr. Edgeworth's trunk. Indeed, it is my knife. What's with this case? Oh, she didn't. The bloody she murder didn't weapon, a red car, all belonging to the prosecutor there? The defendant is the chief prosecutor for the district, right? Mommy, our prosecutor's bad people. Hush up, Johnny. <laughs> the defense has a request. We ask that the witness provide an accurate testimony. What's that, rookie? In your testimony, you stated that Lana Sky planned this murder. But she would have brought her own yep, murder weapon. But that, and that's why she was wearing those special gloves. Seems like a natural conclusion to me. The gloves do indicate planning. However, why would she not also prepare the most important thing? The murder weapon. Oh. This knife just happened to be in the trunk of that car. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to plan a murder, you don't forget the weapon. Ugh. <laughs> there go her lunches. I guess she's gonna lose her lunch, eh? <laughs> <laughs> order, order, order! Great! Now the tide is turning in our favor! Great show, Mr. Wright! My sister's as good as free! <laughs> right. I believe the next lunch you'll be eating is humble pie. W what? I hope you weren't deluding yourself into thinking that the tide has turned. Not over such trifling details. But, but this shoots a hole in the whole premeditated murder theory. Bah! The prosecution could care less if it was premeditated or not. The only one who seems to care is that lunch lady over there. The defendant, Lana Sky, murdered a detective with a knife. That is the only thing the prosecution need prove. Nothing else. Very good, Mr. Prosecutor. I suppose you think you are clever now? But you know as well as I do that she planned on killing him. It was planned. If she wasn't, why would she have been wearing? I believe I'd like to hear your testimony again. Witness, please tell us only what you saw, not what you thought. How dare you? My powers of deduction are not to be underestimated. Really now? Witness well, testimony. Angel's deduction. Oh boy. Lana Sky intended to murder M Detective Go Goodman. Ugh, I can't talk. That's why she called the victim all the way to the pr prosecutor's office. I'm sure the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. Except they didn't know each other. Right. Nothing else could drive the human machine to plunge the knife in again and again. Also, she only stabbed once. <laughs> Very so, good. So Very good. <laughs> I was like, there's two problems there. The victim was summoned to the police department from, from the prosecutor's... <laughs> the victim was summoned from the prosecu <laughs> police department to the prosecutor's office. It does sound a lot like premeditation, doesn't it? 
So, if I order pizza, does that mean I'm planning to kill the delivery boy? Thank you, Emma! <laughs> In any case, the defense may now cross-examine the witness. <laughs> Alright, well, since you've already figured it out, we have time for one more testimony in this video, since I'm cutting probably a lot of this out. Okay. Hold it! You've said that, but you haven't told us how you know! That's what I'm about to tell you, rookie! I believe what she just said was a mere prelude to the story she's about to tell. Try not to interrupt her again. Rookie. Never interrupt a storyteller. It's like pulling a bun out of the oven half-baked. Something's half-baked here, all right, and it's you. <laughs> Try not to confuse the defense witness. They're not very quick on their feet. <laughs> now, wow. why did you believe the suspect had intentions to murder the victim? Her actions speak for her themselves. Oh, really? That's why she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. You have no proof that Miss Sky called him there. You have no proof that she didn't. Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth, thoughts? There is no record of a call made on the defendant Miss Lana Sky's phone. She might have written him a letter. Come on! You could have tried public phone first, at least. In any case, the victim came to the prosecutor's office, where he was murdered. I'm sure he had a reason to be there. Witness? Why do you think it was the suspect who summoned the victim that day? I'm sure that the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. Yeah, I don't think so. What kind of grudge? Well, I wouldn't know that. Of course you don't! That's because she didn't have a grudge. Rookie. I have a lunchbox here. Now, what's inside? H how am I supposed to know? See? We agree that there's a lunchbox here, but we don't know what's inside. A person's life is like a lunchbox with pretzels. Don't you agree? Uh, I get it. That's why my lunch was so salty. <laughs> this judge isn't very good with metaphors. <laughs> <laughs> the suspect had a grudge against Detective Goodman. Will you tell us your basis for thinking this? It's simple. Nothing else could drive the human machine to blunt plunge the knife in again and again. A human machine? That's a contradiction! Wow. <laughs> Please. It's a Can't you find fault with something of substance, Mr. Wright? Note to self, Mr. Edgeworth's sighs smell like citrus fruit. <laughs> um... You say, again and again, how many times did she stab him exactly? We often say, chop into a thousand pieces, but we don't actually mean a thousand pieces. What difference does it make if the deed is done? How come she's getting mad at me? Let's just say she was stabbed him several times and leave it at that. Leave it at that? This is a murder case, people! <laughs> uh, Mr. Wright, you should speak up if you have an objection, you know. Miss Star has turned out to be as short-tempered as she looked when we met her. Challenging her abilities as a detective really set her off. The short wit burns out the fastest. It's a scientific fact. I wonder, wouldn't it depend on the size of the candle? I mean, add more wax and even a really short wick will burn longer. Obviously, more scientific testing is required. <laughs> right. Well, yep. Yep, you already saw it. <laughs> she said again and again, but autopsy report says only once. Objection! You say she stabbed him again and again, but you couldn't have witnessed that. Are you testing me? Then I'll test you. With my moss surprise! Ew. I'm afraid the moss is growing under our feet as we wait, Miss Star. Wh what do you mean? I shouldn't have to explain this, but take a look. The autopsy report states that the, the, the death was due to a loss of blood from one stab wound. What? Uh, aha! You're right! Good show, Mr. Edgeworth! What a hunk! He's my hero, really! What about my objection? No one noticed? <laughs> well, witness? You got the crime scene set, right? Uh, oh, thanks. I always believed that no, matter, or no one could ever mistake ketchup for blood. But now I realize that such mistakes are possible. So, you're saying you mistook something for blood? 
When she lifted her knife, I thought I saw blood at her breast. Splattered blood, blood from the victim. Ugh. That's why I thought she must have stabbed him at least twice. Then tell us what you saw. You what you saw that you thought was blood. Testify. Again. Oh yeah, she testifies a lot. Her red muffler looked like blood to me. That's how ghastly the whole scene was. Her red muffler? Yes, like the scarf. The chief prosecutor always wears one around her neck. Very true. So she can be easily hanged in a moment's notice. Whoa! <laughs> wow! Whoa! That's not okay, Miss Dot. She's right. No, she's not. <laughs> The sky was wearing a red scarf, wasn't she? But wait, isn't it odd that you mistook that for splattered blood? Well, people often mistake my beard for a bib. A judge with a bib? That's why this place feels so much like kindergarten sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I do think I saw some traces of blood on her chest. However, the autopsy report is clear on this matter. There was only one knife wound. Maybe it dripped from the knife. Possibly. Apparently, Miss Star isn't entirely sure of her own testimony. Mr. Wright, this is our chance. Chance for what, I wonder? Miss Star has turned out to be a- oh, there we go. <laughs> Alright, well once again, we know where the statement's gonna be on- No, darn on it! <laughs> Went too fast. <laughs> Alright, so we know it has to be on this statement, because that's the new one that got added. Red muffler? That's like Wait, a scarf. Wait, look at the photo. She's not wearing it. Boom. Miss Star, I demand an explanation! The witness is clearly not suited for detective work. What?! The suspect was not wearing a scarf or a muffler of any kind when what she stabbed the victim. What the heck is Mark? Stop taking our stuff! <laughs> and you've proved it with yourself. With this photograph. Huh? But, but that... That can't be! <laughs> Only a true professional would be so clueless. I'm sure you'll make a good lunch, lady. Have no fear. Here's my question. <laughs> Why the heck is Edgeworth helping us? I think he's just stealing our thunder so we look less credible, basically, and sure, he looks more. <laughs> but he's literally just disproving everything. After we've already shown we know it. Sure. Hmm, harsh words, but good. In the end, Mr. Edgeworth prevails. What was my objection? Chopped liver? I <laughs> didn't get to say it, but, but it was there. Scarf. No, not that. It's something red, really. Well now, where were we? The witness has given us an entertaining interlude, but now back to business. What? Very well, witness. Continue your testimony. You saw the crime and apprehended the suspect. Tell us about that. Very well. I do remember some things accurately, at least. Ultimately, we couldn't shake the most important part of her testimony. The most important part? The part where your sister stabs the victim. This next testimony might just be the moment of truth. Yeah, but we're going to have to leave that for the next episode, because if memory serves, she still has at least two testimonies left. <laughs> Great. So, yeah. Time's up for the, the, today, everybody. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you next time. I think there are still going to be at least two videos just for this trial period. And then we have more investigating, I'm guessing? Yep. Hope to see you next time, everyone. Have a great day, and God bless.